I've heard that a bit this year. Like, do you think there is a lack of respect? Like, people don't respect Spurs enough at the minute, so they're open and attacking them, and it's easy for your speed to run through them. Like, from a rival's point of view, we can ask of Stricto this. Do you think that next year, when teams maybe sit back a little bit deeper, it could be a very different, like like Arsenal have suffered this year? Do you think it could be a, a different challenge for Ange Postacoglu? Yeah, I mean, the kind of football or the style of football they play. Um, it is it is a you know kind of like uh, if I can if I can say like clock a few years ago with Liverpool where it's just full on kind of <clears throat> um, energetic type football. Um, obviously, Spurs have changed. You know when they had um, who was your last manager again? Um, Conte. 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 The, yeah, Conte. The, right. The so you, you and by Mason. So, right. So you was you was a bit more more defensive like they weren't really I heard, heard a lot of Tottenham fans kind of complain about how your football is boring there's nothing to your football it's just stale kind of thing and obviously and just come and it's kind of almost turn the volume up on your football you know like your football is loud now it's expressive but I think the issue with that is yes this first season it's working well but is it sustainable you know you can see like the injuries that you know, a lot, of your, a lot of your players seem to suffer. Whether or not that's down to the volume or the type of football that you play, you know, it is quite, quite um, energetic, as attractive as it is. So going into next season, when kind of maybe everyone kind of sussed it, because people will suss how you play. You know, he's, he's got his first season where, you know, everyone's still finding out about, about Spurs. Listen, I, I'm an Arsenal fan. You know, I'm not going to sing Spurs' praises, but... I'm one that can say if something is good, you know, and I think Ange, you know, has, has come and he's changed the team's mentality or, uh, and also the fans' mentality, you know. Um, and you can you can attest to that, right? 100%. Yeah, I so, think so. You know, so, you know, um, you know all, I, all I can say, all I can say from this end is, you know, um, that you know it makes it more competitive for the league and also for our rivalry as well because i think for so many years um you know it's been arsenal one way and then maybe you lot have had it your way the last few seasons but at the end of the day if you're not winning anything then it's you know it's all us having our way against you you know so maybe Ange might be the guy that might get you an fa cup just a trophy at least something to kind of build on and and kind of start his his, his reign for real but I can't see why not because the football they're playing is attractive. When you came to the Emirates this season, um, I was there and, um, you know, you, <laughs> a derby, you can never really say which way it's going to go, but I, I thought you were the better team. You know, you might have won You might have won that game if, you know, if you had luck go your way, but, you know, you, you can only give credit to Ange, you know, at the end of the day. But I think overall, is that kind of football sustainable? Yeah, time will tell. I mean, all these points that you've raised are good points. And this is where you will differentiate a really good manager from the top ones. And like you said, Stricto, in your second and third seasons, when teams suss you out, pay you a bit more respect. We kind of saw that with Newcastle this year. Teams didn't go gung-ho uh, with them. They kind of, especially exactly. when you go to some games as away and look at the difference. And I know they've had injuries. I know all teams have had injuries. But when teams or managers start to show you respect, can you break down a low block? can you then be assertive and, you know, take the game to the opponents where they're just going to sit back and counter you? And, yeah, we'll find that out as time, you know, it's, it's too early to say that yet. Uh, I think we'll Newcastle see. is a great example, actually. I think that's yeah. that's probably the most comparable to, like, OK, how they was last season and then this season when teams have, have shown them respect, they've found it exactly. a bit more difficult to, to break down, you know. But last season, you know, they shocked a lot of people and even defensively as well they were very very yeah, solid yeah. I mean, look what they did when they came to our ground they 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 absolutely annihilated us and uh, obviously away because you know we didn't possibly show them the respect they deserved at that time this year teams are showing them respect and it's a lot harder as you can see to to get you know for them to get results so yeah th those are good points but obviously it's too early to say and like kate said i mean i thought we'd finish ninth this year i, I had no hope at all. I didn't even want Ange Postacoglu in the summer, as Terry will know, and all the people that watch this religiously. Uh, you know, I've voiced my dis uh, dis uh, displeasure and concerns about bringing him in. He's blown my, uh, you know, expectations out of the water, but it's still a bit of the season to go. Nothing's done yet. 
But yeah, so far, so good because I'm the credit. And like you said, straight. So the way he's turned the team around, got the players and the fans believing and implemented this style of football. You know, we, we talk about different coaches and you can't see what they're trying to do. And this and that. you can see what Andrew's trying to do. But also at the same time, sometimes I do feel that we are a bit naive and we do need to change it up. I know we talk about playing with and not changing your principles, but sometimes I think we overplay out from the back and it becomes too predictable and teams can just push up and cause, you know, a bit of frustration and all that. But yeah, these are things that... You know what, I, yeah, I, just, just, sorry to cut you off, bro. Just even yeah. going back to, um, you know, him changing the club around, you know, he's got the fans on side, he's got, you know, obviously the club or whatever. And I think one other maybe underrated aspect of what he's done that's actually played in your favour is he's got the media on side with him now. You know, like, I've, you know, yeah. before you hear people kind of going like, oh, Kante, like, people can't, there's a bit that level of disrespect, there's a level of respect and a level of disrespect that um, Tottenham used to get, you know, because Conte kind of didn't care for the media, didn't care how he came across because he kind of felt like, look, I'm Conte, I've done this, I've done, where haven't I done it kind of um, attitude, but whereas with Ange, he's kind of, Playing the teacher's pet kind of kind of thing, and the media loving it, and I think that kind of goes a long way with, you know, how people treat your club. You know, if the media, because obviously the media present what they present at the end of the day. So I think that's one underrated aspect of, in, in, you know, he's kind of bridged the gap between your club and the and the wider media, and that goes a long way. It I certainly think the does. Trouble, I think oh, the sorry, biggest problem that Ange has got with Spurs is this the, the mentality of the, of the whole club. I think the whole mentality at Tottenham is wrong. Daniel Levy is always wants top four. That's where the money is. And we don't win anything. And I think that is the hardest thing that he's going to have to to change. And, you know, how he does it, how it's going to change, I don't know. But that, for me, is is the big thing. We're showing heart. I mean, last last year, if we was one all against Brighton, we would have lost or, or drawn that game. We don't stop. Ange does push it and we try till the end. But there, there's just some... Something Spursy about Spurs, and how you get rid of that Spursiness, I don't know. And that's that's going to be the ultimate battle for Ange, in my opinion, for any manager that comes into the club. Yeah, it's uh, you're absolutely right. The investment is going to be absolutely um, key. A few super chats here. Uh, Mar Marcy says, Fleurs, Spurs, sorry, flatter to deceive. They remind me of Oli Ball. <laughs> oh, I mean, we were a moments team, to be fair. Um, but you've got to give him more time. Uh, Harry Kane is such a serial loser uh, that even Bayern can't win with him. It, it, it is poetic if he goes there and not just Bayer Leverkusen win the league. But can you imagine they go invincible as well? The uh, There's an Arsenal connection to that. Can you imagine if they go invincible against Bayern Munich? <laughs> oh, my word. It's, it should have stayed where he was, you say. And then they signed, they signed Dyer to make sure um, they can't win. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's imagine if he wins nothing this year. Oh, that's cool. It would be hilarious! Hilarious.